King Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook. Download the app today and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. Welcome into Studio B of our CHGO offices here in the West Loop of Chicago. I'm Sean Anderson, host of the CHGO White Sox podcast. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. You can follow the show on Twitter at CHGO underscore White Sox. No Herb Lawrence today. He is driving back from Traverse City, Michigan. He's still in the AL Central. Still in the AL Central, uh, visiting our lovely Tiger friends up there uh, in Michigan. Uh, but I am with Vinny Duber, our CHGO White Sox beat writer. You can follow him on Twitter at Vinny Duber, uh, and you can read all of his work at allchgo.com. We got some World Baseball Classic stuff to talk about. We said we were going to recap uh, the game on yesterday's podcast. Not much to recap. The USA stomped them. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about Yohan Moncada's scare in left field in the sixth inning. And also some spring training uh, news and notes that we want to touch upon. And uh, some Mailbag Monday questions as well. What's up to JJ and Joe Tucci in the chat? Thank you to Kevin Wells for producing the show today. And hey, we're getting closer and closer to 28,000 subscribers on YouTube. And uh, that means even closer to the dirty 30, the Nick Swisher number of 30,000. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, so uh, all you 30,000 crazy maniacs. One time I was at the uh, the rate, probably then referred to as the cell, and uh, walking around the uh, the concourse upstairs, and they were they were apply- handing out and applying dirty 30 temporary tattoos <laughs> If uh, for anybody who is interested in that. so uh, And rem- remember, too, they sold that jersey. Dirty 30. D- with dirty on the back. Yeah. Wow, what what a what a time to be alive! Unfortunately, <laughs> I had a Nick Swisher jersey. But did it say Swisher or dirty? It said Swisher. It was thirty, and it was uh, it was the eighty threes. I think for some reason oh, it was okay. a, it was like a got a nice little ringer tee, little sock across the the, the chest. Was it at the Create Your Own T shirt store? So. Uh, every, that place was great. I got I got I saw some some very exciting t-shirts made including from someone who just hopped into our chat oh, uh, 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 once had <laughs> once bought a David Ardsma jersey at that at that store he would I would love to give Connor just like you know the unlimited funds at a created jersey section and just see what his mind comes up with you'd be there all day <laughs> yeah I mean here he is from August 21st my birthday uh, to September 25th 2002 Creedy hit 348 11 home runs and a 1073 OPS good. famously logging six RBIs and two innings against the Jays at 827 including a game tying ninth inning home run and walk off grand slam hashtag mercy uh, thank you Connor Smith for joining in on the he He'd probably create a Creedy Twenty Four jersey if we gave him the chance. I mean, but you could readily get that. It was the it was the goofy stuff that you wanted to see in the, uh, from the Make Your Own T Shirt store. A fresh one, though. I mean, like you know, you probably have to go to Fanatics, and I don't really trust them. I don't know. They probably mess up the Creedy jersey, anyways. But like, I I feel like that's something that they're missing out on. I feel like a lot of people are missing out on. The t-shirt market. Um, obviously, we have t-shirts. Uh, go to the CHGO Locker, chgolocker.com. See, we can jump on this market. Yes, We absolutely. need to come up with some David Ardsmo-style jerseys to <laughs> to print up for the folks to, to buy through CHGO. We, that's, we're only allowed to make players who uh, like are, are have been retired for 10-plus years. All right? Is that so, the rule? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we can only uh, hand out uh, David Ardsmo jerseys, Neil Cott's jerseys. Uh, we have just recently acquired Uribe. Um, that's a joke. Please don't go to chgolocker.com and... Uh, try to order that uh but even then like Stephen Barry's Stephen Barry's was a wonderland I mean uh, you could get any shirt there for like we, five bucks we went there once and I was disappointed mm. because it was all very standard the the designs were just like here's a col- the name of a college on a t-shirt like you know 
come on, give me a little bit of a fun font. Give me a logo. <laughs> I, 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 they were they were disappointing. But of course they had they sold Starberries. Yes, yeah. and, and the Sarah Jessica Parker line as well. Um, I, I said some really mean stuff about Sarah Jessica Parker when I was seven. I was like, Mom, why why is that woman? Why? I, I, I don't know. I just oh. for some reason I was just really mean about Sarah oh. Jessica Parker's That's appearance just rude. when I was a child. That's rude. I, I remember it because it was so rude of me to be yeah. like, why is she on the posters? I Get over yourself, seven year old. I wouldn't. That's something I wouldn't admit on a public forum such yeah. as this. Oops, it's already out of my mouth. Um, <laughs> hey, you know you gotta you gotta learn from your mistakes and grow past it. I'm sorry, Sarah Jessica Parker. Uh, I loved you in uh, what was that show? Uh, Sex in the City. That's right. Uh, Connor also saying created uh, your own T-shirts. I actually own Ardzima, Timo Perez, which is a fantastic one. Jeff Blum, why wouldn't you? And my favorite, Lance Broadway. Um, I feel like we should have Connor on this, this show and just let him just name as many White Sox as he can. And I think he could probably name a that lot. In fill an hour. hour. Oh, absolutely. Fill an hour. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's get into uh, what our guy Baseball Toss is talking about. Uh, Yoan Moncada, Aloy Jimenez, uh, worried about our White Sox. Uh, it hasn't been a, a tough spring. Uh, so far, so good for the White Sox and the health department. Nothing too scary popping up, but here they are last night uh, in the World Baseball Classic. Yoan Moncada trying to field a fly ball in fair territory. He was going back into left field, and Roel Santos was the left fielder. Roel Santos was closing in on the ball. He clearly had the path towards it, but Moncada looking over, drifting back, uh, did not let Santos take it. Ended up colliding with him. Uh, he left the game, was examined for a concussion. Uh, they are calling it bruised ribs. Um, and Pedro Grafal today said, it's minor. Quote, he's good. If he were here and it meant something, he would play today. Uh, Grafal said, Robert Mankata flying in from World Baseball Classic Tuesday will rejoin Team Wednesday. So he will have a little bit of a break to recover, uh, but no, you know, all quiet on the Western front if we want to use a, 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 a movie, an Oscar, an Oscar movie. reference. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, that's the definition of downplaying it right there. So uh, it sounded very reminiscent. Uh, I should say sound it. It read as very reminiscent uh, as what Pedro had to say about Andrew Vaughn just over the last couple of days. Really kind of coming off as like, this is no big deal. Nobody should be worrying about this kind of thing. Um, and that's to be expected. I mean, with, with Moncada's injury, like Moncada has a history of uh, maybe uh, – his reactions being a little oh, yeah. worse than the actual uh, physical uh, toll that has been taken at times. And obviously we know too, that the opposite has been true with him as well. When he has uh, had some really dramatic and significant injuries, he tends to uh, still play through them at times as well. So um, I don't know. I wasn't really worried. I think I showed the highlight to my wife while we were sitting on the couch last <laughs> night and she goes, he got hurt from that. Yeah. And so, you know, maybe he didn't get hurt. Too bad from that. A bruised rib uh, is something that you uh, that the baseball players technically or often play through. So uh, it, it seems that uh, Pedro Grafal has all the confidence in the world that that will be uh, cleared up very quickly. You bring up the reactions and you bring up uh, just the way that it seems like it always happens. You know, if he's running down the line, it seems like something's tweaked or something with Moncada. But again, he, he posts um, and he's been one of the guys that posts consistently for the Sox just beside uh, behind Jose Abreu, uh, Abreu since 2019, 528 games, Makata 432. They're the only ones to play 400 plus games. Leary Garcia in third, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's he usually plays through some nicks and, and bruises. So I'm not too worried, especially again, it's not regular games. If he needs time off, why not be hundred percent for the real games that are going to count? And thankfully he had like actual reps. I mean, this is the reason why they wanted him to go to the world baseball classic. Cause it's a little bit more, up to speed. It's more up to game speed than regular spring training games. So, you know, if he's getting hurt like that and it's not major, at least it's not major, you know? I mean, it's, 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 it's a good thing that he went to the world baseball classic. Absolutely. I, I think, I think one, one of these things is it's no big deal. It's with Moncada. It's been when they start to pile up. And I think uh, it was probably 2021 when we saw it was just a bunch of baseball stuff. You know what I mean? And I think last year uh, the same was true. Like it, it wasn't, it wasn't what the horrible thing that happened in 2020 when it was the, the side effects of COVID, the after effects of COVID that really just drained him for the entire season. It was just baseball injury after baseball injury after baseball injury. And he was gutting through it like Jose Abreu taught him to do. He was gutting through it, but he obviously wasn't the same guy that he was in, say, 2019, right? Um, and, and again, his numbers in 2021 were fine. Uh, last year, though, a lot of injuries contributed to 
what was a very down year for him uh, in the in the production department. He he was uh, battling stuff from day one. Remember, he goes on the on the IL with the oblique literally the day before opening day. So uh, it's it's the compounding nature of these things that have seemed to hold him back at times the last couple of years. If this is the only thing, and and you don't have to worry about the next thing coming down the line, then he should be just where he was during this World Baseball Classic, which, as you you know alluded to, was really good for him. He looked excellent. His numbers were excellent. Um, he looked like the guy that White Sox fans have been waiting all these years to see. Uh, we'll see if that carries over to the regular season. You always have those questions uh, when somebody has a good or bad spring training. Now you'll have the question, will, will it carry over from the World Baseball Classic to this? But I think what everybody has been saying since before they even showed up in Arizona, was, hey, he's going to the World Baseball Classic, and that'll be a good thing for him because he's going to be getting those game-style reps that you don't get during Cactus League play because everything is a little bit, you know, more low-key because, as we've mentioned, it's practice. Uh, The World Baseball Classic was not practice. It has not been practice. Uh, And you've seen... uh, Big performances from a few White Sox players. Yohan Moncada, Tim Anderson, Lance Lynn, and and we've got to throw in our guy, uh, Close Ruiz, as well. Yes, because, we do. Uh, uh, he looked fantastic during the tournament as well. So I, I really think that, you know, yes, there's this um, negative side that you're seeing, this bad luck that you're seeing. If you're a Mets fan, if you're an Astros fan, you're, you're feeling it a lot harder than a lot of uh, fans across the game are right now. But at the same time, all those other fan bases get to say, wow, our guy's got really up to speed and 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 look ready for the regular season uh, for what they were able to do during this tournament. Trey Turner will be the answer to this question uh, once he takes an at-bat tomorrow uh, against either Japan or Mexico in the final. But Vinny, what player leads the World Baseball Classic in OPS with at least 20 plate appearances? I'm going to... Uh go with some reading of context clues and say it's probably Yoan Moncada. You did really well <laughs> in school. Uh, a 435 average, 519 on base percentage, 739 slugging percentage, a 1258 OPS for Yoan Moncada. Uh, incredible. And two, we saw him get into a little bit of streaks uh, throughout the season. They were very minor, but like that one game in Detroit, he didn't really have a bad at bat. He went five for five. Same thing later on in, uh, in Oakland. I do wonder if... Health and consistency will hopefully bring some success for him. I'm really excited for him. Um, As long as he's able to stay healthy, he's out there. Um, I feel good things for him. It's an odd year. So, I mean, that's probably the reason why it's going to be a good year for him. 2019 was good. 2021, 80 walks. 2023, huge year for Yomakata. He's the opposite of the San Francisco Giants. Exactly. (laughs) Um, uh, And... uh, to bring up Matthew Cortese's point, uh, Yawn and Luis being booed uh, was unfortunate. Uh, obviously, we don't know uh, a lot about what it's like to be Cuban in Miami. We don't know what it's like to be from Cuba and having to flee from it uh, in the 60s. Um, unfortunate for sure. Um, but hopefully, you know, in 2026 when they do this again, right? Uh, yeah, if they stay on the same okay. schedule, yeah, three um, years, yeah. If, if you know in 2026, if Yohan and Luis are still playing for Cuba, um, things get a little bit better. Hopefully, World Baseball Classic can be something positive. Um, we've seen the Olympics and other things like that bring out nationality and, and a lot of nationalism for people's countries and and home bases. Um, and obviously, you know, there's a lot of issues with Cuba, Cuba, Cubans, and and Cuba. Uh, but hopefully, baseball and those colors and that flag can. Bring a little bit more of unity because, you know, Yohan and, and Luis look very proud to represent their countries. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously every individual person is going to have their own individual feelings on that and 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 probably very nuanced feelings, right? Yeah. Like, it, you know, you see uh, uh, the, the government uh, roll down the street or whatever, you're going to have a different opinion than if, uh, you know, the the a jersey or something like that uh, is being worn by somebody walking down the street. And I'm talking about every country. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like just because uh, you're rooting for team USA in the Olympics or in the world baseball classic doesn't mean that you agree with, with the current or any past version of the federal government. Right. So, I mean, it's a, a very tricky thing to say that everybody that is being is being represented by this one thing is going to have the same opinion. That's just not the case. And we saw protesters run on the field throughout the game last night, uh, people wearing shirts, protesting uh, the Cuban government, people chanting through the whole thing. So what I did read in, in leading up to this was was quotes from people who uh, live in, in Miami, Cuban folks who live in Miami, saying, you know, man, we are not, 
we we are not here to to badmouth the players at all. We respect the players. We you know we we love that they're doing what they love. And uh, but but this is something that had been used as a a tool of the government for you know a, a propaganda style tool of the government down there. And so obviously that has all those connotations that go along with it. So you've got to respect the um, the history and all the all the little details about that. Also too. Uh, Sports fans in general in this country have a tendency to just boo the opposition regardless of who or what they are. So, uh, you know, you say, oh, man, it was a bummer to hear uh, uh, the Cuban players being booed. Maybe there were some American fans <laughs> throwing the boos because that's just who was playing Team USA that day. Uh, so I, I, I think that uh, uh, you've got to remember uh, how sports works in general. When they do the introductions uh, uh, on April 3rd at the, at the rate uh, for the Sox-Giants game, uh, there's going to be some folks who have uh, been having fun all morning in uh, in the parking lot, and they are not going to like the sight of the San Francisco Giants, that historic well, rivalry between the White Sox and the San Francisco Giants. <laughs> I was going to joke and just say that, and it's the Ray Durham rivalry. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the, exactly. Uh, there you go. But uh, I, I mean, I, I just thought all the people booing were White Sox fans. You know, I mean, the, the people who uh, don't like the White Sox players the most are White Sox fans. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I... Uh, uh, Matthew and JJ saying Yoan got booed loud and then it was garbage. Yoan and Luis being booed. I, I think it's also just because they are the most prolific MLB players that are on that roster. Um, even Yoan Cespedes, like, I mean, he was a part of the team and then left. Um, we didn't see him. Uh, and then, I mean, even Randy Orozarena, who had a fantastic World Baseball Classic, will continue to have a fantastic World Baseball Classic for Mexico. He was born in Cuba. Uh, then uh, fled to Mexico, started a life there, and then just became really proud of uh, his Mexican heritage that he ended up developing and, and being a part of the culture and how welcoming Mexico was that he fought for uh, uh, citizenship for Mexico and was granted by the government. So, like, you know, I, I don't think Randy Ros Rosarena is not proud to be Cuban or, or anything like that. I think it's just really difficult because of what he had to go through. Jose Abreu, obviously, um, what he had to go through to get to this country to be a Major League Baseball player – I, I bet he's got some 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 feelings towards Cuba, and it's probably why he's not wearing that uniform right now. And hey, everybody's got their own story and their own reasons. I mean, there's a guy, uh, there's an American player, one of the best American players in baseball, is playing for Team Canada for very specific reasons, right? The guy who was the star pitcher for Team USA the last time this tournament was played just played for Team Puerto Rico for his specific reasons. Alex Rodriguez is the one I always remember. American-born Alex Rodriguez suited up for the Dominican Republic. Very specific uh, reasons for that. So, I mean, I, I don't think uh, that uh, you can paint everything with, with a big, broad brush. Um, certainly, that goes for the people who are in that stadium and the people who are protesting and the people who are watching that game as well. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, let's go to Sergio's question. Um, who do you guys think will win, Mexico or Japan tonight? Who will be taking on Team USA? Japan's a big favorite, um, and I think they're currently just a big favorite to, to win this tournament in general because they have been playing great. They've got some impressive talent on that team, and it goes well beyond uh, the guy whose name everybody knows in Shohei Otani. Uh, you know, there's just there are some guys who are probably going to be playing Major League Baseball in the uh, in the near future, in the coming years. Um, who, Lars Nupar. Well, he is already playing Major League Baseball, but some guys who have not yet made uh, the trip over to uh, to the United States, uh, who probably are going to become household names here uh, uh, down the road. So, um, a lot of talent on that Japanese team. It'll be very cool to see if it indeed is Japan that takes on Team USA because just. Uh, just so much, so much good baseball players uh, are going to be uh, playing down there in Miami. Absolutely, and uh, tonight, uh, twenty-one-year-old Roki Sasaki will be making the start for Japan. He is probably the next superstar from uh, that island, so it'll be very, very exciting to see what he can do uh, tonight against the Mexican lineup that has, you know, major leaguers up and down it: Rosarena, Verdugo, Meneses, uh, Telez, Paredes, Urias, uh, Alec Thomas, local product. I mean, he was born in Chicago, and there he is playing for Mexico uh, in Austin Barnes uh, and they got Patrick Sandoval of the Angels on the bump so it should be a really really fun game between Mexico and Japan tonight um, and, and even then uh, it's either Japan versus USA the two powerhouses in the final or uh, Mexico versus USA and USA could probably uh, or try to re 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 uh, 
exact some revenge on you, the Mexican team that beat them 11 to five uh, earlier on in this tournament. So uh, interesting to watch tonight and we'll have more tomorrow as well. Uh, once we know that final matchup, uh, anything else from the world baseball classic, we'll get into a loy after the break. Yeah. I just think that there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of headlines for the white Sox players who are in it. I think, you know, you take a look at Moncada TA uh, uh, Lance Lynn, uh, Close Ruiz, uh, and I mean those are guys who had really great tournaments and 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 you know really changed the story. I think. I mean, uh, you know, certainly people on the South Side are still going to be treating Yoan Moncada with some skepticism after the season he had last year, and that's totally fair. But I think there's a lot more excitement about him and what he can do this season after what he did in the World Baseball Classic. Certainly, the same goes for Jose Ruiz on a different, on a, you know, a little bit of a different note. Obviously, he's a guy who. Maybe coming into spring training, you were like, "Is he going to be in there? Is he going to is he going to make that bullpen?" Obviously, so many names, uh, so many talented arms at the back end. There was, was there going to be room for Jose Ruiz, especially if they make the Rule Five pick in Nick Avila, mm-hmm. and you're like, "Ooh, is 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 Jose Ruiz going to be in there?" Well, now it's like. White Sox fans, oh boy, can't wait to see Jose Ruiz get in there. But I mean, seriously, I mean, like makes the job very easy, makes that decision very easy for the White Sox where it's like, wow, that guy that that we've relied on so many games the last few seasons, now we can look at him and say, he's a guy we want out there. He's a guy that we are very comfortable having out there. So um, I think it was interesting. We didn't see uh, much production from Luis Robert Jr. Um, Again, that doesn't mean that the, that doesn't write the story for the whole season, but I think it was interesting to see Moncada, go this way and Robert maybe go the opposite direction. Um, and Aloy Jimenez uh, is a guy who I know was playing uh, for the Dominican team. Didn't really, as, as someone who didn't watch every game of this tournament, didn't really hear a lot about uh, Aloy and what was going on with him. So, um, you know, uh, obviously some really big names on that team. So from a national standpoint, focus is probably a little bit elsewhere. But, um, you know, obviously we know what the Team USA guys did. T.A. and Lance Lynn were, were stars. And, yeah. uh, and and so I think that's uh, mostly a very positive uh, um, showing from White Sox players in this tournament. Aloy was fine. Uh, it's really just after doing with uh, – it really has to deal with uh, Dominican getting bounced. Uh, he was 5 for 11 in the World Baseball Classic, had a double, two RBIs at four. 455 had an OBP of 455. That's good. And a slugging percentage <laughs> of 554. That's an OPS of 1000. Uh, you know, only 11 at bats. So very, very small sample size. I don't know if there's enough to uh, draw from that, but even Tim Anderson uh, is now basically Mark DeRosa's favorite player in, uh, He's taken over the second base job from Jeff McNeil. Uh, Bobby Witt's not even playing because Tim Anderson's just pushing down poor Bobby (laughs) Witt. And DeRosa said, quote, and this is from Bob Nightingale in USA Today, out of any player here, he has grown on me the most. I think when you play in the World Baseball Classic, it's a feeling out process at first. He kind of wanted to let some people know how good he was in that dugout, in that clubhouse, the coaching staff, down the line. He has really caught the eyes of a lot of people on this team. That sounds like Tim Anderson. That sounds like exactly what that guy wants to do is, I'm Tim Anderson. I know I'm great. Let me show you that I'm great. Yeah, and I mean, I think last week we talked about it as like, yeah, no surprise. Right. That's I mean, you know, uh, the South Side might not be under the uh, national microscope uh, uh, very often because that's what we come to expect from a guy uh, who who goes to a stage like that we expect him to shine as bright as anybody just because we know that that's that's what he's been doing for this White Sox team. Certainly not even when it comes to like, oh, are you going to get a big hit or something like that? I'm just talking about the personality, the attitude, the presence that he is in both the clubhouse and the dugout. Uh, I mean, they played him at second base. Mm -hmm. He'd never done it before. Didn't really look very good doing it, to be honest. (laughs) Sorry, Tim, but that that just was the the situation. Yesterday, with uh, almost dropped the pop-up in that first, in that disaster first inning, or would have been a disaster first inning, um, you know, for for Team USA. uh, Almost let that one drop between him and Paul Goldschmidt, but... uh, no matter because he's in there to get hits and boy, did he uh, even got another one last night. So, um, you know, uh, we know this to be true of Tim Anderson uh, and he'll go back to shortstop. Now, f- once this tournament is over uh, a place where he, he plays pretty well. Well, and poor <laughs> Tim Anderson. I mean, you know, you try to be as good as you can. You hit 313, 368, slug 500, have an OPS of 688, uh, right? You know, you, you're 5 of 16. We talk about his postseason record uh, or his postseason stats where he's hitting 465 in the postseason. Uh, oh, what does Trey Turner do, the starting shortstop? He's got four home runs. <laughs> I mean, he just looks insane. I mean, he looks like Nolan Arenado out there with power, hitting grand slams, two home runs last night. I mean, he's he's he got paid $300 million for a reason. Um, it's tough to compete with that guy, but yeah, it's, it's been a really fun world baseball classic. Um, 
Other than that, Lance Lynn, uh, I thought this was funny on um, what is what is the, the AJ Perzinski thing called? Is it called f- foul, foul territory? Ball, foul, yeah, I think it is. Foul Territory TV. Um, it's with Adam Jones, Eric Kratz, uh, Scott Braun, and AJ. Um, and they had Lance Lynn on. And Lance uh, said he called the White Sox and said, hey, can I pitch tomorrow? Can I do anything? Can I close? The quote was, absolutely not. <laughs> Glad he checked in, though. Um, and, and I did like hearing that he feels underrated. Uh, it still feels like, uh, you know, he, he said to you, uh, you know, if, if you didn't have a chip on your shoulder, you know, now you have one, basically, uh, after last year. And uh, it seems like he's really trying to prove everybody wrong uh, for overlooking him because uh, he said he wants to pitch till he's 40, too. So I'll take as much Lance Lynn as we can get. Hey, I, I, I don't think I can say it enough. I think he's in for a really big season because basically uh, every time that he's been healthy in a White Sox uniform, he has been fantastic. And uh, uh, he's going into this season healthy. He just showed it in the World Baseball Classic. He showed it at the end of last season. Um, so there's really no reason to expect anything else from him unless health becomes a problem because that's the only thing that made him look, you know, for lack of a better term, mortal uh, in the middle of last year after he came back from the two-month absence was the fact that he was just still getting used to being on a mound. His whole timeline was thrown off. Um He's right on. He's right on schedule for where he should be right now, if not well ahead of it, because of the World Baseball Classic. And it looks like he's going to go out and do the things that he was doing to these opposing teams, these opposing countries, to the AL Central and any other comers uh, uh, here in the at the outset of the 2023 regular season. Yeah, and I thought it was funny too. You mentioned uh, when he got taken out of the fourth inning in the last game, he thought it was a joke. He was like, what are, you, what are you talking about taking me out? Um, so, yeah. I, so, I, Lance being Pedro, Lance. Yeah. yeah. Well, and <laughs> just imagine that the first time Pedro is going to try to take Lance Lynn out, and he's like, don't worry. I, I've been here before. I'm going to go one more hitting. <laughs> <laughs> um, and two, uh, Lance talking about being underrated since 2019, seventh in all of baseball in F4 for starters, just behind Nola, Bieber, DeGrom, Cole, Wheeler, and Scherzer. Ridiculous that uh, Jacob DeGrom in, uh, what is this, 70 starts compared to you know, Aaron Nola, who has 110, uh, has about, you know, 0.5 more war. Uh, Jacob DeGrom, pretty damn good at baseball. Uh, let's take a quick break and let you know about DraftKings Sportsbook. You can bet on the uh, Cy Young uh, over at DraftKings Sportsbook. If you like Jacob DeGrom to win the AL Cy Young, clearly he's very good at baseball. You can go over to DraftKings Sportsbook and check that out. We talked about Aloy Jimenez, and we'll update you on his spring training injury in just a second. But you can bet over 29 and a half home runs as well on DraftKings Sportsbook for Aloy Jimenez. Check out their vast MLB market. You got a lot of player futures and team futures that you can try to win some money on this baseball season. I've been winning money on March Madness and betting on the NCAA tournament. We got CHGO bets going on at 3 p.m. all this week, so make sure you're tuning in to Cody and I to get your best picks for the night. Make sure you download the app now, the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top-rated sportsbook, and sign up with code CHGO. New customers can bet $5 and and get $200 in bonus bets instantly only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA with code CHGO. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Also want to let you know about ComEd Lighting. ComEd's energy efficiency program is committed to helping families and businesses in the communities we serve save money and energy or uh, in the communities we serve manage energy usage and lower their energy bills now and into the future. ComEd offers a wide array of incentives on lighting and other efficiency upgrades to commercial, industrial, and public sector customers of all sizes across our territory. And customers can inquire about how to update lighting to energy and money-saving efficient LED lights. Learn more about network lighting to operate your lights through your mobile device and track your facility's energy usage and more. Incentives have recently increased for indoor-outdoor lighting and network lighting controls, making these projects even more cost-effective than before. So visit ComEd dot com slash powering biz that's comed.com slash powering biz now to start saving money and energy and to start a project you can contact us contact us at 1-855-433-270 for more information you can email business ee at comed.com or public sector ee at comed.com thank you to comed for your support uh baseball toss was asking a little bit earlier about uh aloy jimenez a white Sox fan jumping in to ask about aloy jimenez uh do you got an update i got the update i mean i do but i'll say this uh 
you'll notice Sean has his computer open. I am just sitting here talking, so I had no idea what the heck oh. anybody was talking about. Well, so I had to take that ad break to go online and see, like, because everybody's like, Aloy, Aloy, Aloy. I'm like, did I did I miss World Baseball Classic Aloy that ended like a week ago? Like, what what are we what are we talking about here? So I was very confused. I thought you know you got to add Aloy to the list is one of the comments I saw, yeah. and I was like, oh, did he get hurt in the World Baseball Classic? And then I checked you know a, a news thing, and it was like, oh, Pedro going to give him a couple days off after getting back from the World Baseball Classic. Um, um, but what we're referring to is, uh, I guess, right as we started the show, yeah. um, after his second at bat against the Diamondbacks today, Aloy was uh, helped, uh, or I guess he just left the game. Um, it's, I think someone referred to, um, who's the Kirk? Kirk uh, Cruck. James Cruck is the tra- is the White Sox trainer. They, he, you know, they walked out together. Yeah. Um, uh, it looked like he ran to first base. Had some issue maybe like with that. But it seemed like he peeled off to first base. It seemed like, because uh, Chuck has the video. Yeah. Um, he, he's thrown out of first base. It's a little tapper in front of the uh, the first baseman. And he seems to peel off, walk by Debo. And the the, the dugout's there. Um, but yeah, it did say walk back to the White Sox facility with trainer James Cruck. Uh, right, but, because they're, they're at home, I'm guessing. Yeah. So they can, when they need to leave, they just leave. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like, a, oh, they go back in the tunnel. They No, they literally walk down the right field line to go back to uh, the complex. And so... That's what people saw, and that's what happened. So when you say leave with the trainer, it means he left the stadium with the trainer. Yes, and uh, <laughs> this is what I'm re- referring to like earlier with, you know, the world is falling if any of these guys get hurt. Uh, there's so many people being like, oh, it's a day that ends in Y. It's right calf crampness. Uh, it's crampness, uh, crampness is a fun word that cramping. Dr. Anderson just uh, invented right, over right, here. Right calf cramping, uh, <laughs> and he is day-to-day. So Aloy is going to drink some electrolytes, stretch out his leg, and hopefully be fine. Uh, I wouldn't be too worried about somebody playing in Arizona heat uh, cramping up. I'm I'm not too worried about this. I don't know about you, Dr. Duber. Yeah, I'm very much not Dr. Duber. But, uh, yeah, I mean, listen, he's day-to-day. I mean, uh, in in my line of work, that means ask Pedro tomorrow and see what the update is kind right. of thing. And about nine times out of ten, it means, yeah, we're still looking at it. Yeah, yeah we're, we'll he, did he'll he, be fine. Does he come to the, did he come to the park today and say, I can run? So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to – you know, say it's absolutely nothing, but it's nothing, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, put more concern into it until there's a reason to do so. So um, obviously this is Aloy Jimenez. He has a history of, uh, of injuries. And then, so I understand why people's, uh, uh, you know, alarms went off. Ear, ears would go up when they, when they hear Aloy leaves the game. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, this is, this is something that isn't anything until it's something. So. I know that's a, a no fun answer for anybody, especially if you're looking to set a fantasy lineup or something. If you're in the if you got if you got big money on your cactus league fantasy <laughs> league, um, uh, obviously what you should have done was drafted Hanser Alberto because the guy is uh, an absolute machine. But. What you should have done is uh, and apparently you just hit another home run. <laughs> he did um, three run dinger. Mercy. Uh, what you should do is call one eight hundred Gambler because if you have money on. Sp- Cactus League games. I, th- I think that's a, that's, a, that's a problem, folks. I think you got to call somebody on that one. Uh, speaking of fantasy, too, uh, we're going to be doing this uh, idea either Tuesday or Wednesday when Herb is back, but uh, we're going to be drafting uh, some AL fantasy teams. Uh, maybe I'll be checking out Rotowire, uh, trying to beat you guys, but uh, that should be fun. We'll be going around the, the diamond uh, drafting our top AL teams. Herb's obviously going to take Pablo Lopez because he's better than uh, Lance <laughs> Lynn. Ahmed Rosario will be on his team sure, playing shortstop because sure. he's better than Tim Anderson. Um, yeah, I, I think we'll both beat Herb. Uh, at least in, in this experiment. <laughs> um, but yeah, don't worry about Aloy. He'll be fine. Uh, there was one more injury update uh, from spring training. Matt Foster has some tightness. So that's obviously concerning with any pitcher. But as you mentioned, Jose Ruiz kind of stepping up a bit. And right now, it doesn't seem like Matt Foster's projected anywhere towards the uh, big league bullpen. Seems like it's going to be Diekman, Avila, Lambert, and Ruiz kind of finishing out those final spots there. Sure. I, I think, uh, you know, Matt Foster played uh, a pretty significant role for a very brief amount of time last year. It really seemed like everybody was kind of taking their turn in that bullpen being kind of the surprise dominant guy. And for about a week or two, it was Matt Foster, right? Uh, and Started off the season, I think. Exactly. Right? Yeah, he, w- he was great. But uh, by the middle of the year, you know, no longer even on the team on a regular basis. So I um, think just too many too many talented arms in that pen this year for, for Foster to find his way in there. Um, you know, it would have had to be probably a number of injuries in order for him to, to, to work his way back uh, onto that uh, uh, opening day roster. Well, and he was a 
uh, a COVID star. I mean, he was uh, a bullpen. Just I thought he was going to be a bullpen uh, mainstay for the Sox him, for a while. Him and Cody Hoyer. Oh my yeah, God, Cody Hoyer was so good. Yeah. Um, that's that's why we got Craig Kimbrell, folks. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, uh, Matt Foster. I don't know. They didn't have the scouting reports on him. Uh, no, no one had the the double A tape. But his changeup, his fastball just played differently in 2020. Uh, he was he was fun to watch. And listen, this is the bullpen, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there are going to be guys just cycled in and out of that thing right. throughout the whole season that's how baseball works um so i i don't think you can say you've seen the last of matt foster should he be healthy enough at at some point in the season to to go out and 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 produce well in the minor leagues he's going to be right at the top of that list of guys to call on when you need an extra arm you know somebody uh uh you know they just had a game where you know it went extra innings and they needed all every man in that bullpen basically well you're gonna need to call somebody up to 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 provide some freshness Matt Foster could very well find himself toward the top of that list. He was on the shuttle kind of all year last year, and uh, you know maybe he's uh, in that a similar role again this year if and when he's healthy. Well, and unfortunately, the last year we did see Ryan Burr uh, deal with some injuries, and then he got sent down to AAA, and then he, he was released from the organization. So um, hopefully we don't see that with Matt Foster. Hopefully he's healthy. Um, but you never know with, with bullpen guys like this. You know, it just they, they're so volatile that, you know, it, maybe it's it, it, it reaches the end, at least for uh, them in an organization. But we obviously we miss we, uh, we, we wish Matt Foster the best. Uh, obviously hate hearing forearm strains for, for any type of pitcher. Uh, let's take a quick break. We'll jump into FOCO uh, and let you know about the best merch merch out there. Chicago, you've already got the best coverage for your favorite team, so get fitted in the best sports gear around. FOCO has you covered from Soldier Field to the front room, north or south side, all the way to Traverse City, Michigan, with hoodies, slippers, signs, bobbleheads, and everything in between. Get decked out like tomorrow with apparel from the leaders in sports merch and collectibles. FOCO, if you're looking to build out your man cave, build out your clothing selection, maybe you're just looking to have your feet be warm on your, your wood floors. Uh, check out FOCO.com, F-O-C-O.com, or click the link in the description below. And for all non-presale items, use the promo code C HGO for 10% off. They've also, probably got some like really good sweatpants mm. that you can get if you happen to be suffering from right leg crampness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they, they sell uh, sleeves that he could put on, uh, compression sleeves. Uh, and there'll be a nice little white sock logo on there from FOCO. Cure that crampness. <laughs> uh, also want to let you know about Game Time. Game Time is the hottest new ticketing site. That's good for cramps. Heat, right, Dr. Duber? I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, game time's the hottest. Just drink ex- water, right? It's a dehydration thing, Chris, elect- right? Yeah, ele- yeah. yeah electrolytes. Some salt. Yeah. Salt? Yeah. yeah, you need a little salt. Oh, just Pickle do- juice. Some Domino's pizza. Oh, there you go. Yeah, well, sure, run up help. to the concession, get him a pretzel. Yeah, he, well, it's probably all the weight he's losing, all the 35 pounds. I mean, he's probably cut out so much salt just, in his diet. It's just chicken breast and vegetables. <laughs> it's all he's eating. <laughs> Put some more salt on the chicken breast. Uh, game time is the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. If you ever dreamed of sitting in a seat you never thought you could, 50-yard line, court side, behind home plate, floor seats at a concert, it is possible with the Game Time app. The biggest last minute price drops can be found on seats you never thought you could buy. You won't find a better deal this season on White Sox tickets, maybe Taylor Swift tickets. I know my girlfriend's looking for Taylor Swift tickets. I, I'll be pushing her towards the Game Time app. Uh, you two in Las Vegas when they open up the Sphere. I want to go to that. But did you listen to the new uh, You Two uh, acoustic album? Didn't listen to all forty. Um, Not a fan. Well, really? I yeah. mean, I haven't heard it yet. That's disappointing. Well, it's yeah. it's. Have you heard? All, have you listened to YouTube before? Oh yeah, it's all the same songs. Like they're just re- kind reimagining. Of it's it's an unplugged album. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't hate it. Um, I I did find myself just going to the regular songs once I listened to them. Right. Um, but I I want to li- watch the Disney Plus thing where that does look good with that Letterman. Good, yeah. Um, I do like the new Vertigo version where they kind of have the acoustic and then the the orchestra behind it. I was like, yeah, that's badass. Uh, but yeah, I got I got to watch the. The U2 thing. But I want to see them in the sphere. Uh, it was created by the fans for the fans. Game Time was and guarantees the lowest price. If you love CHGL, then you love Game Time. The best way to support us is by buying your tickets to the link in the description. Join over 15 million people. Download the Game Time app and score the best seats to all your favorite events. Um, yeah, uh, apparently $56 uh, today would, would have been able to buy you a Tusk when it came out. Uh, I just saw that tweet that you sent me uh, where... Uh, Back in 1979, uh, Fleetwood Mac was charging $16 for an album, 56 bucks today. That's basically a White Sox ticket. Um, I, I don't, I don't understand what they did with that album. I do, I'm sorry to bring up Tusk. I, I think know you could probably go on killer. the Game Time app and get tickets to some Sox games for. 
far less than right. fifty six dollars. Well, yeah, yeah, we got uh three tickets back in September for for under forty, I think. Um, so shout out to Game Time. Uh, let's get into the final part here, and we got a Monday mailbag question from our guy Ian Robo. Um, kind of discussing the last roster spots again. Uh, we haven't gotten, you know, we're not near the end of the season, but we're getting closer and closer with each day. Um. I thought it was interesting talking about those final spots. Obviously, Grandal and Zavala will be the catchers on the roster. Uh, Vaughn, Andrews, Anderson, Moncada will be your infield. Benatendi, Robert, Jr., and Colas will be your outfield. Jimenez is the DH. Um, but as the three bench pieces, we got Leary, Sheets, and Hamilton is what you told me before the show. Um, what, what kind or, of... Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, so, so like, <laughs> what, what are the options really there uh, outside of, you know, on those last 11 spots where Leary, Sheets, and Hamilton are? I think... She- I think Sheets makes the team uh, because what what you're really looking at here, you've got a bunch of guys that can play several positions, uh, and, and that's a good thing. That versatility is good. And so I think when it comes to um, manning some of these spots, you want to I want to look at it this way. Sheets is probably going to make the team, but he's going to do so because he provides lefty power. And so whether that's off the bench or starting every once in a while uh, at, at, you know, DH, right field, first base to spell Andrew Vaughn, whatever it might be, He's there to hit the ball very far as a left-handed hitter. The other two spots then are you need a, an outfielder to to play defense because even though Sheets might be a fourth a fourth outfielder, I don't think he's there to be an outfielder. Right. And so I think you need somebody to go and have defensive ability at all three outfield positions. Well, with the whole Vaughn stuff that we're seeing with his back, does Sheets kind of gain more importance with this first base flexibility? Because we've seen the the Colas discussion and we keep wondering like, well, they're both lefties. They both really can't hit well against lefties. And, you know, I mean, they're both going to see righties about the same. Like, you know, it, it's going to be tough to platoon those two players. Do we see a little bit more of a platoon at first base to spell Andrew Vaughn? I mean, if needed, sure. Uh, I, I don't, I, I mean, Jose Bray is the only guy that's going to go out and play 160 games, right? So I think that you shouldn't expect the White Sox, anybody on the White Sox, to, to log that kind of, of, of time. Uh, and so you're going to need to plug people in when these guys get days off. There's just going to be, you know, one day Andrew Vaughn, whether he's 100% healthy or not, is just going to get a day off because he's played a ton of games in a row and he's just going to get a day off. Someone's going to need to play first base. It might be Yasmani Grandal. It might be, uh, you know, it, 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 it might be Gavin Sheets. So it, you just need somebody to do that. Gavin Sheets can fill in there. He can fill in a DH. He can fill in in right field. Uh, and, and that's fine. Also, he can come off the bench. You know, if, if, if Pedro Grafal is going to be this matchup guy that he keeps talking about being, right, there's going to be matchups in games, late in games, where it's the eighth inning, the White Sox are down a run or two, and there's a guy on the mound who's going to own Andrew Vaughn, mm-hmm. right? But Gavin Sheets might be a better matchup. So why don't you go ahead and pinch hit? And that doesn't just apply to Vaughn. It applies to anybody on the team because then you can you move guys around. But, you know, it, to have lefty power off the bench is a big deal, and I think Gavin Sheets is going to make the team for that reason. But my point was that he might be a fourth outfielder, but he's not a fourth outfielder with a capital F and a capital O, right? right. He's because he can't play center field. He can't, he can't spell Luis Robert Jr. in center field. He can't, he, and he's probably not going to play much, if any, left field either. So... You need a guy to do that, to play the defensive end, and I think that's where Billy Hamilton comes in. He seems to be getting a ton of playing time in Cactus League, and he's just really fast. He does something that not everybody who would be in that mix, whether it's Victor Reyes or Jake Marisnik, he does something that those guys can't do, and that's a, have an elite, elite base running ability. Um, so he's very valuable if you put him on the roster, not just because he can spell any of those guys in the outfield, but because he can, you can stick him on second base in a tie game in the ninth inning and win because he can, he can get home better than anybody else can, right? So that leaves the, the backup infielder, your fifth infielder. And I really think it comes down to Larry Garcia and Hanser Alberto. Uh, I'll mention Romy Gonzalez just because when we were talking about this earlier, you said, well, what about Romy Gonzalez? Um, Romy Gonzalez. Who was referenced Ben Zobris like. Well, in terms of the the position they wanted him to play. Right, exactly. I think they want to turn him into, long term, a guy that can be plugged in everywhere, which Larry Garcia is now, and to a lesser degree, Hanser Alberto is now uh, as well. Those guys are veteran players. They've done this for a long time. Romy Gonzalez has very little major league experience. Um, Romy Gonzalez can also go back down to AAA. Neither of these other two guys can. Um, 
Hanser Alberto has earned a spot on this team, not just because he's been amazing in Cactus League. Of course, Cactus League is, as we know, practice. And Pedro Grafol told me before I left Arizona that stats are the last thing they're going to look at when determining whether somebody uh, has had a good spring or a bad spring, for that matter. Um, but Alberto's been getting rave reviews from Pedro since camp started uh, because he coached him in Kansas City. He knows the kind of guy that he is in the clubhouse, and that seems to me to be the thing that wins the day uh, for Hanser, Hanser Alberto if he does make this team over Larry Garcia. That's not to say Larry Garcia is a bad team, and I think he's a very positive clubhouse presence as well. It's just when you've got a manager banging the table for a guy, it it, it says something, I think. Um, Larry Garcia when we brought him up to Pedro early in, in camp, uh, kind of said like, oh, well, you know, he's got to compete for a spot, which is not something you would expect to hear from a guy who's on a three-year contract, a guy who's the longest tenured player on the team, and a guy who basically from every manager prior has been lauded endlessly for what he provides to a roster. Now, I'm not saying that Pedro doesn't agree with those assessments, but it sure seems to me that, you know, think about what Pedro said about how he advocated for Andrew Benintendi, a guy who he had in Kansas City, right? He said some very glowing things about Billy Hamilton, a guy that he had in Kansas City. Does familiarity, does a year playing uh, uh, for a Pedro Grafol team in Kansas City, you know, do it for, for Hans or Alberto? Does it make him uh, the guy to be this backup infielder? along with all the great success, obviously, that he has had so far this spring in Arizona. So I don't know if today I can sit here and tell you that, oh, that's it, Larry's done, that's the end of Larry legend here on the south side, because there are things they have to weigh, and certainly an $11 million financial commitment is one of those things. Um, but it would seem to me that we've heard a lot more good things about Hanser Alberto from one of the guys who's going to be making this decision in Pedro Grafal than we have good things about Larry Garcia. Well, and I, I think the one thing that has changed clearly is Tony La is not on the bench anymore. And we saw when Tony La Russa left on August 30th that Leary's playing time drastically decreased. And he was a little bit banged up. He but, was a lot banged up. But, but even then, he was still being played all throughout August when he was his most banged up. I feel like September, he probably got more time off. He was probably a little bit fresher. In the first 129 games, 72 starts. In the last 32, four. And I just, I don't know if it's losing favor. I don't know if it's all health. I don't know if it's a little bit of both. But I do wonder what not having Tony La Russa, who seemed to be a huge advocate for Leary Garcia, not just seeing him as a role player. He was a starter, but he could play multiple different positions. I, I think having that support, you know, is is showing a little bit. Leary has to win it. And I know that, you know, you bring up stats and it is Cactus League stats. Um, and I know stats can be controversial, but sometimes the better player has better stats because um, they're better. And and I think Hanser Alberto has shown that against lefties, he can do near league average damage. Like he can be an average hitter against lefties. Leary Garcia really can't do that. He doesn't really play def defense well. He plays a lot of different positions, but he doesn't play any of those spots like decently. I, I, mean, I think he's a pretty short. good shortstop. I think he's a pretty good shortstop. He's got a good yeah. arm. Um, but, but even then, like Billy Hamilton, like Hamilton's a great defender. Um, and that's the right. thing is like, you're getting a great defender and great base running. Alberto will give you position flexibility, a good bat versus lefties. And, you know, Leary will give you position flexibility as well. But I mean, maybe speed. Well, this is, this is my thing when it comes to the outfield is that in the, over the, in the last two, three, two, three years, Ed Angle was no doubt going to be that fourth outfielder right. because he was really good on defense and the White Sox weren't, their starters weren't good at defense with the exception of the year when Luis Robert won a gold glove. This year, the, the one thing, the one big thing that they did accomplish this year was really boosting the, the defensive ability in the outfield. Luis Robert is Luis Robert, but to put Ben and Tendi in left, a, a gold glover himself, and Oscar Colas in right, who comes with a great defensive reputation. And great I reviews mean, from Terrell Boston. <laughs> of course. But those, I mean, those, that's a, that's suddenly they go from a, a defensive outfield where two of the spots are guys who are playing out of position to that's a good defensive outfield. And so, it doesn't necessarily, they don't need that guy to come in every night in the eighth inning and replace Aloy Jimenez. You know what I mean? They don't need Adam Engel to come in every night and replace Andrew Vaughn. So if your starting three outfielders are expected to go nine innings in every game they play, Billy Hamilton being really good at one thing 
suddenly becomes more valuable necessarily than oh man we need a guy who's going to be able to who who's going to be able to succeed when given a lot of playing time. This isn't you know a, a, a Lois taken out in the seventh and Billy Hamilton goes in there and he's got to have an at bat. Mm-hmm. This is put Billy Hamilton in, in the top of the ninth to or the bottom of the ninth to to run for you. Right. And yeah, he's going to give he's going to give. Uh, uh, time off to the guys that are usual outfielders, right? But so are other guys, you know, like Colas needs a day off. We'll put sheets in there and then you're confident sending sheets up to the plate for three or four at bats in a game where you might not be confident doing that with, with Hamilton. So I, I think that his ability to do something that nobody, none of the other guys can outweighs like if it, you know, Jake Marisnik wins the job, for example, you're like, okay, well I, I'm more confident maybe in him taking three at bats once every week, you know, or something for at bats once a week, but the White Sox don't need their guys to do that very often. Right. So, yeah, I yeah, know I, I agree because it's like I don't really know what Marisnik and like because I think Hamilton plays better defense and speed and has more speed than Reyes or Marisnik. Like right. Reyes probably might give you the best at bats, but I feel like Reyes needs that consistency to even really show the potential of the bat. Like you're just kind of leaving them in case of pinch hit where seems like Sheets can do that. Um, it seems like versus lefties, Hanser Alberto can possibly do that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's it's interesting. I mean, too, you, I mean, you bring up Adam Engel, uh, the most famous game where we, we, we last saw Adam Engel, basically, um, coming in for Andrew Vaughn for a defensive uh, sub and, and dropping that ball uh, against the Orioles. But you And know. that's a shame that that's going to be his right. legacy with this team because – what he had that one one week where he robbed like four homers in one week, so uh, that's a shame because he's a great great defender out there. But uh, that was just uh, a a moment in a season gone wrong that uh, was really one of the um, most uh, defining images, we'll say, if not a right. defining moment, a defining image. Well, and then uh, <laughs> you know. I, all-star Liam Hendricks gets uh, taken deep by Kyle Stowers, who's a rookie. So uh, not, you know, just weird things happening in that game as well. Luis Robert not able to swing a bat, like, you know, just, just odd circumstance, not on uh, Adam Engel, but uh, hopefully Hamilton, who's kind of a little bit less worried about making the team, less worried about trying to find his hitting. Like if Billy Hamilton comes up here, steals bases and plays defenses defense, he's doing his job. Like Billy Hamilton doesn't need to be Billy the hitter. That would be, that was just, you know, kind of, you know, cherry on top last that, in 2021. That would be my opinion. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I, I obviously might not see what the White Sox front office is looking for necessarily, but my opinion would be you put Billy Hamilton on this team because you're trying to win a world series. You need to win as many games as possible and you need every element at your disposal to do that. And for a, for a team that uh, struggled so much at, at running the bases last year, for a team that struggled so much at playing defense last year, you would think you would value some of those things in trying to win you games uh, in, 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 you know, the, the smallest of margins, the game of inches, that kind of thing. You think you would value that. So I'm not trying to disrespect Victor Reyes or Jake Marisnik, who you put them on the team, and maybe they're a very, you know, a bench player that contributes very well. But um, I see someone with an elite attribute in Billy Hamilton, and I would think that would be well-valued. He's got a thing. He's got a thing about him that makes him, uh, you know, worthy. Uh, and hey, JJ, bringing up Victor Reyes's contact skills, uh, but you know, I, I don't know about Arise or Quan type. Those guys are a real elite of elite, and I don't know if he had that type of elite skill. The the Tigers, who really don't have anyone in their their organization, I don't know if they just let that guy walk. And we really haven't seen a ton from Victor Reyes, so I, I don't know about Reyes and uh, being a an Arise Quan type. But uh, interesting. We'll see. Uh, maybe he has a huge time in Charlotte but we talked a little bit about defense there obviously outfield is upgraded you don't have Andrew Vaughn in left field so that's a major upgrade um is the defense overall better though because Vaughn to Abreu um you got second base now you got Elvis Andrews there and we're a little bit skeptical of what he could do because it's a new position um Grandal's been rated as one of the worst defensive catchers but he's healthy like is is 2023 for sure and certain going to be a better defensive year for the Sox Better, yes. I, I don't think you can look around and say, oh my God, they improved at every position, right? Because they kept most of the same players that they already had. Um, you would think that bringing in a, a manager um, who is so much emphasizing fundamentals and so much putting a focus on that um, would help, right? And I think that's what the White Sox thought too, because obviously in, in basically every area, they have pointed to a new manager and a new coaching staff as being 
the biggest offseason additions, the thing that's going to get this team back to where they think it should be. Um, I think the the outfield, obviously, because it's two new players, you would you would say obviously that's a big defensive upgrade. Um, I thought Jose Abreu was a very good defensive first baseman by the time. He left, or certainly over the last, let's say, four or five years, you know, was a very good uh, uh, defensive first baseman. Um, I don't know what to expect from Andrew Vaughn because I, I haven't seen him. I know he's not as uh, – he, he won't have the same range not as tall. Jose Abreu, yeah. um, uh, but we'll see what happens there. Uh, Tim Anderson is Tim Anderson, I think. You, t- you take the good with the bad. Um, Yohan Moncada is very good defensively. He's excellent defensively at, at third base. Um Yasmani Grandal, there, there are different ways to look at deep, or there are different things within defense, right? So I think, you know, there are certain things that he does behind the plate that are very good, you know, working with the pitching staff and 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 certainly framing if you still care about such a, such things. Um, I mean, hey, the, the robots aren't here yet, right. so uh, <laughs> um, that that those are and those are good defensive skills, right? The but. Um, we saw him and and Sebi Zavala both, and 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 even Reese McGuire run to the backstop an awful lot last year. Um, and uh, so, I think that uh, again, it remains to be seen. I think health will play a big role in that. Um, and then Elvis Andrus is playing a position that he's never played before uh, before this spring. So, um, will they be better? Yes, they should be better. Will all every problem be fixed? I don't think I can say that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I, I think. Again, like you said, Tim Anderson, there's good with the bad. But if if Andrew Vaughn's average, you know, catcher is kind of a toss up there. But like Tim is your worst defender because I think Andrews will definitely be serviceable. Moncado is excellent, as you said. Like Tim's got so much range, he could try to make every play. Like that's a fine guy that you know if he's if he's a little bit above uh, below average when it comes to outs above average. Uh, I'm, I'm not too worried because again, he's. A, a, a different type of athlete. Um, Again, you, like I said, when I say you take the good with the bad, I mean you take like the highlight reel right. stuff with seven errors in a week. He's gonna make some errors, yeah. right? And and I think every player is gonna make some errors. You know what I mean? But um, it's just minimizing those. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Jose Abreu took a few, you know, took a few errors away. But um, we'll see if uh, we'll see what the numbers are and if uh, if it makes a big difference on the on the TA side, right? As much as it does, like you obviously there's there was Jose Abreu making good plays at first base and turning that double play that he always turned. We'll see if Andrew Vaughn can do that. But uh, but you know, for all three other uh, uh, infielders. There's going to be a difference in in throwing to Vaughn versus throwing to Abreu. He's short. Um, he's he's above 200 pounds. I found this stat today. Uh, players under six feet tall and uh, 215 pounds or heavier. Uh, there's only 83 players of that sort to play. Uh, at least a thousand plate appearances is 2,000, um, which I found kind of odd. Uh, only 40 of them have average to above average OPS pluses as well. Uh, so not even half of those guys, uh, the shorter. Since 2000. It's 2000. Okay. 83 guys with 1,000 plate appearances who are six feet shorter uh, and 215 or more. Andrew Vaughn's one of them, and he's one of the 40 that have a, an OPS plus uh, above 100. Uh, so I'm trying to find uh, the perfect Andrew Vaughn comp. But uh, Jason Kubel's a lefty, so I can't, you know, he's, he's not a perfect one. Uh, but even to catch your blocking, uh, this is a new stat on StatCast, and I love to share stuff like this. Uh, team catching last year for the White Sox in blocking, you mentioned Reese Zavala and Grandal going back to the backstop. They were 24th in catcher blocking uh, at negative eight. Worst team? Pedro Grafals, Kansas City Royals, and minus 17. But that's probably on MJ Melendez. He was the worst catcher uh, in all of baseball last year, and Sale was a little bit banged up. Uh, but that's going to do it for the CHGO White Sox podcast. That's Vinny Duber. We have over 40 people watching and only 16 likes. We really would appreciate you guys hitting that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe as well. We're closing in on 30,000 subscribers, and we would love to hit that milestone before the end of March. Did you advance in the first round of Merch Madness? You don't even know. No, I didn't. I well, defeated. And, I defeated Matt Peck. Congratulations! Thank that's you. A t- that's a tough one. It was. Um, I thought. I, I felt like I pulled a real fairly Dickinson Princeton type situation. <laughs> I, I thought I was gonna. I feel like I. I really first rounded this. I. F- I feel like I was uh, too cocky oh. in, in the merch itself. Uh, the Nux hoodie is one of my favorites. Um, and, and no offense to Greg, but and, and and his hoodie, but mine's better. I didn't buy his hoodie. I have the camo one and the Nux one. Uh, and I, I stopped pushing it. But also, like the first original poll was deleted, so I feel oh, kind no of, technical difficulties. Yeah, I feel oh, I feel no. a little screwed. I feel like I got to talk to Casey about this because wow. uh, yeah, I feel like there's a three, I mean, we could do three person polls on Twitter. 
So I feel like next round it should be a three-person one, but you know, we'll talk to the the committee. Uh, that's Vinny Duber. Follow him on Twitter at Vinny Duber. He's our CHGO White Sox beat writer. I'm Sean Anderson. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. Thank you to everybody for hanging out with us in the chat. Herb will be back tomorrow. And thank you to Kevin Wells for producing the show. We'll talk to you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Go Sox.